Yo, what's up everyone, it's King Spider-Man Cool here, and today I'm going to discuss about the new Halo Infinite update 343 just posted a few days ago. Now, I am so happy that 343 finally posted an update on Infinite this month, cause to be honest, I wasn't sure if they would. Now, like I did in um, December's update, I'm going to be summarizing the article and going over my thoughts on everything. But before we get into that, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, as it will really help out the channel a lot. So besides that, let's just hop into it. Right off the beginning of the article, they said that these infinite update blocks will happen every last Thursday of the month, and that they're intended to be fairly high level. It's pretty good to hear that we'll be um, getting these updates every month. Hopefully, um, they will hold us until we actually get some pretty big and major news. Also, they said that these updates will cover the different areas and aspects of Halo Infinite. So we will get to know the different teams uh, working on the game and how they are working on their part of the project. This month's update will cover the Sandbox team and how their approach is to Infinite Sandbox. So if you didn't know, the Sandbox is all the weapons, gadgets, vehicles, and objects the player can interact with. The Sandbox also includes the player's run speed, jump height, health, shields, and all that kind of stuff. The Sandbox team is basically supposed to make all of those fun and unique to interact with but also make them balanced. So yeah, that's basically Infinite Sandbox area in a nutshell. Alright, here is our first screenshot for this month's update. It's the battle rifle for Infinite. But damn, it looks really cool. I really like how they went back to the classic design for the rifle. While, the Halo, while Halo 4's and 5's battle rifle were different, they're not as good as the classic one. I really like Infinite's battle rifle and especially its slick design. This is the very next screenshot that they showed us. I'm pretty sure it's either a uh, concept art or an early model for the grapple shot. It's pretty neat. I think this little image here is an early model of it. And this tiny description says that both dials rotate when shot and rotates the other direction when you pull in. So I'm guessing they're making sure to include the small details when making these objects. Next important thing that they talk about is something called the compact doctrine which is basically the core of Halo's gameplay and sandbox. The combat doctrine includes stuff that 343 calls the dance, tools of engagement, lone wolf, connected actions, and survivability. They basically all add up to players should feel effective no matter what weapon, gadget, or vehicle they're using, or even if they're just a one-man team, and that each weapon, gadget, and vehicle will be unique and effective in their own way. 343 said that they will be working closely with player feedback and they will be then they will make changes to the sandbox as the game continues. So that's good to hear I guess. So the next thing in this article that I think is important is when they talk a little bit about how the vehicles work in the sandbox. They break it down into three parts and I'll talk about each of those parts. Uh, the first part is that each type of vehicle or, ev or even each individual vehicle will have different strengths for different areas of the map. For example, they said that the Warthog is better at traversing through certain obstacles on the land. The Ghost will have more of a smooth ride on almost anything that's on land. And the Banshee will help you tra um, travel places that you otherwise wouldn't with the land vehicles. Secondly, they said that a lot of the vehicles will basically encourage players to work cooperatively. There are many examples in the Halo games that have players working together. One of the famous examples is the Warthog. And for the last part, they said that vehicles will dominate the sandbox and almost um, there's almost no way of stopping it. Unless of course if you have like power weapons or you're being creative about it. Right here is the Needler for Infinite. And like I've been saying for all these weapons, they're looking really nice. If you take a closer look at it, you can see that all the hexagonal patterns that are on the Needler. Like I said before, the team is making sure that they are putting attention to detail on these objects. And here is another weapon. This is the new Bulldog Shotgun. Previously, before they showed um, this image, they said that the Bulldog will change up things with the mechanics of the shotgun. Now the shotgun, now the shotgun will be a bit more weaker, but still, a, um, and it's still an effective weapon and that they didn't really want the shotgun to be a power weapon. So I wonder how exactly um, that will play out once we get the game. Next up, they talk about how the weapons and other stuff in the sandbox will probably get some tuning in later updates based on player feedback. 
So basically this means that we should see some changes to these weapons or vehicles or whatever. They'll probably have a different feel to um, to it once we once these updates um, come out. For example, uh, say if one vehicle is going slow in a previous update, but then the next update that same vehicle feels a bit faster. That's the kind of stuff that we'll see in these updates for the game. This weapon here is the Commando, another weapon we saw in the trailer. Like I said before when I was making when I was talking about the trailer, this weapon kind of looks something like you would see today. But who knows, let's give it a chance. From what we saw in the trailer, the weapon seems like a mix between the assault rifle and the DMR. Having a fire rate that's slower than the assault rifle, but faster than the DMR. Now, this next weapon I am some somewhat excited to talk about. It is a weapon that has been in a previous Halo game, but has gotten a completely classic and sharper redesign. This weapon is the Hydra, which has been in Halo 5, but it looks quite different compared to Infinite's Hydra. I honestly much prefer Infinite's Hydra compared to Halo 5's one. I'm really, I'm really liking the more sharper and classic design. It looks really nice. These next few paragraphs are basically the last parts of this section, but they are quite interesting. So the team says that their favorite, what their favorite weapon, gadget, or vehicle in the game is, and there are two answers that are quite interesting. One of them said that this, that it is a vehicle they haven't shown yet, but has a completely new coat of paint and isn't totally new to the uh, to the Halo series. So, um, this could be this vehicle could be one of many things. The first things that come into mind for me are the Chopper from Halo 3 or the Falcon from Halo Reach. If it is the Chopper, it will more than likely have a banished coat of paint. That would be sick. It would also be pretty cool if it were the Falcon too. It also can be many other things like the Hornet, the Revenant, or even something like the Spectre from Halo 2. The other interesting answer someone gave is a new vehicle that is between the Warthog and the Scorpion. So is it something like a vehicle that has almost the speed of a Warthog and the power of a Scorpion? Some people are saying that it's going to be uh, something like a Flamehog, because some of the words that he describes the vehicle have some something to do with um, heat or flames. Alright, this is the final weapon that they showed off this update. It's nothing special, it's just, a, it's just the assault rifle. But I will have to say that they added the yellow stripe to the AR that was in um, Reach's AR. Alright, final thing before we finish with this article. And this time, we're greeted with Joseph Staten. The thing that he talks about this time is the new mechanics with the hunters. So usually when you come up against the hunters, you just get behind them when they charge at you and shoot their backs, which is their weak spot. But in Infinite, it's not the same thing. And I'm gonna quote what Joseph Stane said about the Hunters. What's to do? That's easy, I said to myself. The first time I fought Hunters in Halo Infinite. Bait them. Get to them charge. Then step aside, pivot, and direct as much firepower into their exposed, warmy backsides as you can before they, turtle to, before they turn and turtle. But when I tried these classic dance steps, the Hunters had something else in mind. As expected, one of the hunters charged, exposing its weak spot. By the time I pivoted to face it, however, it already pivoted to face me. That's odd, I thought, it must be a bug. I tried the dance steps again, same result, except this time the second hunter filled my face with fuel rod projectiles, setting me scrabbling for cover. Crouched behind a uh, forerunner pillar, shields right up, health and deep into the red, I had a quick think. What's different? Hunters turn faster. Okay. Assume this isn't a bug, what's the game trying to tell me, and what new dance moves have I got? As another volley of enemy fire rattled my virtual head and saw my virtual helmet, I remembered, I remembered, I have equipment, specifically in the case of more reactive hunters. I have a grapple shot, which means I am more faster and more mobile too. Alright, so all of this means that hunters have become more smarter than in the other games and that you're going to have to utilize the new gadgets in the, ga in the game to beat them. All of this is pretty good to hear, because it seems like the enemy AI has become um, more smarter. And that about wraps up the article. So let me know what you guys think of it. It was pretty neat that we got some more information on Halo Infinite, but I kinda wish they gave us a little bit more. I kinda wanted, wanted to see some new screenshots of the game that we haven't seen yet. But hey, it's good for now. 
Anyways guys, I'm gonna end this video off here. If you liked it, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to, to the channel for more content. Also, go check out my Twitch channel, I stream there every so often. And go join my Discord. Alright, that's about it. Peace out.